In chapter 16, we'll start looking at radical reactions, and first we need to define what is a radical. A radical is a reactive intermediate with a single unpaired electron. And then next, we start, need to start thinking about the shape. So radicals have trigonal planar geometry, and they have a lone electron in a p orbital. So this would be an example of a radical. So if these are all hydrogen, This would be a radical form from methane if it lost a hydrogen, so it's the methyl radical. See how it's trigonal planar, and there's a lone electron in a p orbital. If we're going to draw a reaction for forming a radical, if I have, say, a molecule Remember that radical reactions use half arrows showing that there's one electron moving rather than a double barbed arrow which show two electrons moving. And this will form a radical on a carbon plus a hydrogen radical. Now in a molecule like this you need to decide which one is more stable, so we could either get that radical or this bond could break to one of the primary carbon and hydrogen bonds could break okay, so what we need to decide is which is more stable this secondary radical or this primary radical. So the question is then, How do we know which is more stable? And the way that we know which one's more stable is we need to look at how much energy is required to form each radical. We can take our neutral molecule and give it some kind of a baseline energy. Okay, so, so that's our energy of our neutral molecule. And then we can look at the energy that it takes to make the radical. The difference here is 95 kcals per mole. That's for the secondary radical. For the primary radical, the difference here is 98 kcals per mole. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the secondary radical is more stable than the primary radical by 3 kcals per mole. So what we end up seeing in radicals is the same thing that we see in carbocations. And 
and that is that tertiary is more stable than secondary, is more stable than a primary, is more stable than methyl.